What's up everybody? I'm Logan and this is Worldly Reviews, the YouTube channel where I geek out and talk shit. And today I'm going to be talking about Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. Over the past few nights I've been watching the Crystal Lake Memories documentary which documents like all the Friday the 13th movies from the original to the remake. And when they got to the section on Part 5, just something came over me where I was like, yeah, I want to rewatch that. It's been far too long. And this one is really one of the most hated movies in the franchise. Go ahead and give y'all a spoiler warning right now because, I mean, this is an old movie. I'm going to talk spoilers, so spoiler warning it is. But yeah, one of the reasons I think everybody hates this one is because Jason isn't the killer. It's a guy dressed as Jason, but there are some subtle differences. Main one being the mask has blue stripes as opposed to the classic red stripes. I can understand people that grew up with Friday the 13th watching each movie as it came out in theaters. Totally get why they would hate part 5 with it not being Jason as the killer. But I didn't get to see this film until the 90s and that's when I was probably 10-ish. Yeah, I got into horror at a young age. This was actually one of the first Friday the 13th movies I saw. Wasn't very familiar with the story. I mean, I knew the gist of it. I had seen part one, but I hadn't really seen a full movie, I don't think, at that point in my life. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. So I guess going in with not knowing the history made me like this more because it was just something new. It's definitely one of my favorite slasher movies. It's probably actually my favorite slasher movie of all time, but it's not my favorite in the Friday the 13th series. I know that doesn't make sense because, yeah, Friday the 13th is a slasher series. How can this be my favorite slasher movie if it's not my favorite in the series? I don't really know how to explain it. That's just the way it is. But this movie really does have all the elements you would really want from a slasher flick. It has a high kill count. It has some pretty creative deaths. Plenty of nudity and sex. And surprisingly, these characters really are kind of relatable. Out of all the Friday 13th movies, like, I like these characters the most, I think. I don't know, there's just something realistic about this movie. And the movie follows Tommy Jarvis as he is older now. You know, we haven't seen him since the fourth movie when he was a kid, played by Corey Feldman. And now he's in kind of like, I don't want to say a halfway house, but it's a house where troubled teens now live before they're able to go back into society. Now you get two kills in this dream sequence in the beginning, but the first actual kill in the movie is done in broad daylight in front of everybody. One guy who is a complete douchebag takes the axe and chops up this kind of nerdy guy who you could tell he doesn't fit in anywhere. The other guy just says, fuck that and chops him up. And then after that happens, people just start dropping like flies. Even side characters that really don't make an impact on the movie are killed off. The driver that drove Tommy to the house or whatever, he dies with his girlfriend. Two random guys stuck on the side of the road get slaughtered. There really isn't many people that survive this. In fact, it's only three people total. And yeah, that might seem like a lot of people surviving a slasher flick, but when you look at the body count, you're like, holy shit, I can't believe that many did. One of my favorite kills in the entire Friday 13th series is in this movie. And it actually happens to be two. Two characters are having sex in the woods. The guy goes to take a piss when he's done. And the killer, because you can't call him Jason, puts a belt around his eyes and wraps it around a tree and starts taking this stick to make the belt tighter. And it just starts caving in his eyes. Such a creative kill. Never seen anything like that before, and I have not seen anything quite like it since. But before that happens, his girlfriend, who's out laying on the blanket, completely naked by the way, gets killed by hedge clippers that go straight into her eyes, and then you get the kind of struggle of the holy shit. That's why you don't have sex in these movies. But like I said, I understand the hate for it, but I love this movie. I mean, it is a very important part of my upbringing with horror. But if you get past the fact that, yes, it is not Jason killing everybody. It is actually the paramedic that found the first guy that was chopped up was actually his orphaned son. So he dresses like Jason to make Tommy, the main character, think it's Jason coming back to kill these people. And really, it's just a revenge story. And a damn good one at that. 
could have used a little bit more blood and gore, but a lot of that ended up on the cutting room floor. There's a lot of deaths that were a lot more brutal. And sadly, we'll never see a director's cut because back in those days, anything that hit the cutting room floor was destroyed. So much great horror cinema history fucking gone. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly suggest it. Even if you saw it back in the day and hate it because it's not Jason, give it a rewatch like I did. I have a much greater appreciation for this film now. But that's it. And be sure to hit that like button, drop a comment down in the comment section, share on social media, and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the videos I got coming. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.